video, I'm going to introduce R Studio, uh, which is a, a front end to run R, which is much uh, more intuitive than than trying to uh, to run code in in the R software. So the first thing you need to do if you're going to be working on your own machine is to download the two software packages. So if you if you Google CRAN and R, that will take you to uh, as you can see, the comprehensive R archive network, which has a tremendous number of resources available there. And um, you can just click on that, and you can see you can download for Linux, Mac, or Windows. So uh, you'll want to do that on your own computer at some point. And then you're also going to want to download R Studio. So if you just Google R Studio, you'll come up to this will be the top link, and uh, you can pick the the, uh, the version you, you need for Windows, Mac, or what a, other operating system. Let's open our studio now. So I'm going to open it up on my on my Mac here. And what we see is a four-pane arrangement of, of Windows. So uh, always arrange two by two. Um, Let's talk about what these different panes are. This first one up here on the upper left is called the source window. And that is where we're going to, to type our commands. Uh, we're going to be able to save our commands there. Uh, when we do that, we are creating what, what is called an R script. So you can save your R script and you can upload it later and run the, run the code again. Or you could modify it, changing variable names and so forth. So once you have an R script that works, that does a particular analysis, then you're golden. You can use that R script uh, to run subsequent analyses, just changing the variable names or the the the, the number of or the, the data file that you are analyzing. Uh, so it's very very useful. We'll be using R scripts uh, a lot over the next uh, two classes. Down below, we see the console, and you remember the console uh, you, you saw in the original R uh, uh, windows where, where all the results show up. And uh, again, this uh, open source language appears uh, every time you, you log on to, uh, to R Studio as well. So we can get rid of that. And the easy way to do that is just to hit Control L. So Control L. And that gets rid of all the stuff. So it's not a bad idea to clear your console from time to time. What you're going to do is to put all your code up in the source window, and you can save it that way. Uh, and all your results are going to show up in the console. You can also put your commands in the console window uh, and run particular commands that way, and you'll get the results in the console window as well. But the problem is that you will not; those commands will not appear in the source window, and so you can't save them to uh, a script file. So it's a good idea to always put your your commands up in the source uh, window, a source pane, and let the console area be the place where you see your results. There are two other panes, uh, and uh, we'll talk about history uh, as we go on. And, we start to upload some data and uh, make some variables and so forth. So that's what we see there. And once you start doing uh, some analyses, then the history of, of all that you've done. So these are actually um, commands that I've used uh, re recently that, that have shown up uh, in the history. So you can, you can clear the history if you want, or it might be useful for you to copy some of this and put it over in the source code there. But we'll go back to the environment for now, and you can see it's empty at the moment, but it will we will soon have it populated with various and sundry things. Then this pane down here uh, is multi-purpose, but one thing we have is a browser, so you can browse to anywhere on your computer uh, using uh, that particular uh, tab on the window. When we make a, a graphic, when we make a plot, that will show up here in plots, and again, like we saw with the quartz uh, window in R, the plots can have many, many different uh, graphics, and you can just scroll through them. Packages are add-ons that, uh, that we can use to, uh, to 
increase the functionality of, of R. So these are, are uh, packages or bits of software that people have developed to do particular uh, jobs, and uh, they've been shared. So they've, they've been put up on the, the CRAN, the, the uh, Comprehensive R Archive Network, and you can download those. And you can see that some of these packages are are built in, and there are others that you can add as we as you go along, and we'll learn how to to add packages and how to activate them. But R, when you first uh, start it up, is actually fairly lean. There are relatively few packages. It still can do a lot, but specialty packages can really uh, extend and expand the power of R. Just as an example, um, I was doing some work recently with banding recaptures of birds. So I knew where a bird was initially banded and then it was subsequently captured somewhere else, maybe in a different state or even different part of the country altogether. Um, and so what I knew was the latitude and longitude of, of where the bird was initially banded and where it was recaptured. So what I found is a package in R that I could upload and by entering the lat long for the, the banding site and the lat long for the recapture site, uh, it would calculate the distance that the bird flew as, as a bird flies and also the direction in a 360 degree system. So maybe 175 degrees, uh, almost due south uh, might be the direction and uh, it might have flown 750 kilometers. So that's the sort of thing that you can find to help you uh, do various and sundry uh, uh, analyses on R. There are almost 6,000 packages available on, available on R, so there are all sorts of things that you can do. There's also a help uh, window right here, and um, I was most looking recently at adding a straight line to a plot, so that's why that's showing here, but you can search for a search field here to, to find help and I'll also show you how to find help uh, right through the source window as we go along. So this is the way that, that R Studio is laid out. There are no flying windows like we saw in, in R, so things are going to be um, where you expect them uh, all the time. You can also modify the arrangement of the pane. So if we go up to oh yes, global options, uh, then we can click on pane layout. And maybe you want to put your console up here. So all you've got to do is to say, I want to put my console there and it will move the environment down there. I always like to have my source in the upper left because that's always where I'm starting. So that seems like the intuitive place to start that. But I could put the console down here. I can do whatever ever I want there. Um, so I, I can apply that and I've now moved. I can also change the the appearance of the panes, and so I'll click on that. And maybe I don't like this blue background. Maybe I want to use some other some other background. And you can scroll through all of these, and uh, it gives you uh, a glimpse of what they look like here on the right. So that's, that's twilight, midnight, tomorrow night blue is what I've got working right now. Um, and solarized is one that, that I actually like a lot. Solarized dark is a little too dark for my taste, but um, but I'm going to go ahead and say that I want to use solarized. And I can also change the font, and I can change the font size if I wanted to. So I'll say OK to that, and now I've got uh, this appearance. And I like my console down uh, where it was uh, before, so uh, I'm going to switch that back out. So I'll do that right here, and now I'm ready to go. Now, R can do the simplest things, and it can do extraordinarily complicated things. So let's start by just asking R to be a calculator. So I'm going to go up here in my source, and I'm just going to say 5 plus 4. And if I hit return, nothing happens. And the reason for that is that we have to run the command. So there are two ways to run this particular line. One, we can go up here and hit run, and 9 appears down in the bottom. So we, we've reproduced the line of code, the 5 plus 4, 
and then we've got the answer down in the console. There's another way to to uh, to cause this particular line to be uh, be run, and that is instead of hitting return, to hit command return. So if I do that, so it depends on whether you like to point and click or you just soon use a your uh, your fingers. But so five and four uh, equals nine, and we can it can do that. We can also use R to raise things to power. So five to the third power. So that should be 125, and lo and behold, uh, it is. One of the important uh, conventions in R is the use of objects. And an object can be the value of, a, it can be a number, it can be a series of numbers, it can be a graphic, it can be a, an analysis of variance or some other analysis. Uh, it can be a whole line of code be all sorts of things. But the way we identify objects is to give them a, a name on the left side of, of, a, of, a, of a command. So let's just use x. And then instead of saying equals in R, what we're going to use is a left-facing arrow. And we have to make the arrow by using both the less than sign and then a hyphen. So that means X is going to be defined as, um, in the parlance of, of, uh, of our users, they say that, that it gets. So X gets what? Well, let's say that X gets 7. So and I'm going to run that. And look what happened up here. I have a new value. I have a new object that I developed, and it's called X. And it shows up in the values uh, por portion of the upper, upper pane, the environment uh, pane there. And let's make a different object. And so let's say uh, y equals 6 plus 7. And I'm going to run that. And now, oops, I didn't quite finish my command, did I? So because it didn't show up here, I knew that something was wrong. So I needed to put only, not only the left hand, the less than, but also the the hyphen there. So now it will run. So I've got x and y equals 13. And then I can do other things with objects. I'm going to define an object um, z, and z is going to be equal to x, let's just make it a little different this time, x times y. And I'll run that. Again, what I'm doing is hitting command return, um, or I could just go up here and hit run. And what happens is that I get 7 by 13, and I define my new variable, uh, my new object, and it's z, and it's equal to 91. So pretty straightforward uh, stuff there with, with R. But R, of course, is going to be able to do, to do lots more things for us. Now, in the last video, uh, I talked about the fact that there are some built-in uh, data sets in R, um, in fact, there are quite a lot of them, and uh, we can look at all of them by using close, close brackets, open, or open, clo open and close brackets, open in parentheses. What it means is, give me everything that you got. So I'm going to run that again. So once more, I have to hit command return or go up to run, and it's going to open up a different window here. And these are all of the data sets that we have um, available in R which are useful for learning. So there are all kinds of data that you can see here. And what we're going to do is to choose a, a data set called iris. So it's this, this fellow, Edgar Anderson, worked on, on the flowers, the irises. So he has some data there. Now, over here, I've still got my, my script. And that's I've opened up a different window, and I can see all the data sets. So let's just say that I know that I've got that Iris is the, is the data set that I want, and I don't really care to see all the other data sets now, so I'm just going to X out of that. And what I'm going to do is to go ahead and save my, uh, my script here. So simply go down, and we can call it whatever my first script, or script. And what I'm going to do is to save it to this file that I have on my desktop, where I keep all of my R files uh, and, uh, and save it right there. So now you can see that the save name is there and it ends in the suffix uh, R. So we know that's an R script 
because of the, the suffix there. What I want to do is to load the iris data. So to do that, all I've got to do is to type data iris, and then I'm going to run that, so command return. And you can see that the uh, iris data set is showing up here in the, in the environment window. Uh, right now it says promise because what it's doing is it's loading all the data and it will, it will show up uh, sooner or later. But we'd like to know uh, what the data look like. And so we have several commands that we can use to, to get a look at the data. So one that's very useful is the, is the structure command. And we just abbreviate that as str. So I'm going to say structure of iris. And it's very useful when you're, pre pre when you're preparing a, an R script to uh, also describe what you're doing sometimes. And so you can always use the, the number sign here. And everything to the right of the number sign will be skipped by R. It won't try to run that particular command. So uh, I'm just going to say what this is going to do like that, the iris data set. So uh, now I can run it, and I, I will do that. And you can see down in the console that what this has told me is that I've got five different variables. Um, the data set is 150 uh, columns long, or 150 rows long, and I've got five different variables. Four of them are numeric, as you can see, uh, and they all have to do with the portions of the flowers. So sepal length and sepal width, petal length, petal width. And I also have a classification variable uh, species here they call it called a factor in, in our studio. The factor has three different levels and these correspond to three different species, Citosa, Versicolor, and uh, I've forgotten what the other one is, but we'll find that out um, soon enough. Um, so now we know the kind of data we have. We might want to take a look at the first few lines of data, so a very useful um, command there is to look at the head, and that's going to give you the first six lines of data along with the headers. So there we see they, what they are, and we can also look at the last six lines by doing a tail of iris. And so we see the last lines there, and that tells us what our last species is, the virginica. So we have uh, iris citosa, iris versicolor, and iris virginica in our particular uh, data set here. All right, now what we uh, want to do next is to uh, is to get some simple statistics on on the data. So one very useful function is summary. And so I'm going to say uh, I want to summarize all the different data that are present in this particular data set. So I'm just going to type summary and then note, note the data set, iris. And what it does down here is to give me um, the minimum value, the first quartile, so the first 25% uh, boundary, median, so equal numbers above and below, the mean, the third quartile, 75% of all values are below that, 25% above, and the maximum. So I've got that for sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. And of course, I, I can't really calculate statistics on, on a category variable, but I can know that I've got 50 of each of those. So that's a very useful sort of feature there. Um, 